Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Air Arms S510 Carbine Super Light on test, but before that, I'm back out hunting in the woods. I might have to wood pigeons this afternoon and it's the same area where we were a few weeks ago where birds were hitting a game cover crop very hard. Now I'm faced with the same problem again, the height of the crop makes it difficult for decoying but also I don't really want to be crashing around through game cover at this time of year because I'm going to be scattering pheasants all over the place. So the plan is to target them from within the woods and pick off pigeons as they fly back and forth from that crop. I'm in a slightly different area so I'm covering them from a different angle but there are a lot less leaves on the trees now, so hopefully the shooting should be a little bit easier. Right, I set up a hide last time, but I'm not going to bother this afternoon. The concealment could be handy, but to be honest, I want to stay mobile because pigeons don't always flight to the trees that you expect them to, so it can be handy to be able to move nice and quickly if you decide they're targeting another area of the woods. So, I've set up in an area that gives me a pretty good view of some tall oaks and ashes which I assume those birds are going to be flighting to. Also I'm very close to a very thick oak trunk that's casting me into shade also just giving me a bit of cover that I hope is going to work with my camo clothing to keep me out of sight from incoming birds. I'm using the FAC rated Daystate Mark IV today. Now pigeons are pretty bulky birds so if I'm using a legal limit egg and I try to restrict myself to taking them with headshots Thing is, these are tall trees and with a bit of a breeze pushing through them this afternoon I'm going to struggle to make those headshots. But with the extra clout of the 30 foot pound 2-2 I should be able to cleanly dispatch these pigeons with strikes to the heart and lung area. That was a good start. I thought I heard something moving in the tree behind me. Turn around, the squirrel was out, it's frozen dead still. No, it's not what we're after, we're here for the pigeons, but the keeper will always be glad for any squirrels that we can get rid of, so that's a brilliant start to the session.
few pigeons starting to move now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide on the scope cam so we can hopefully capture a few kill shots through the crosshairs. Right, there's a pigeon in, but it's completely obscured. I can't even get a shot through to the heart and lung area. It's typical, but I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully it might even attract some others as they flight past. Right, there's another pigeon in, but I just can't get on it. I can see part of its chest through the scope, but the problem is it would just be a glancing shot. Even with the FAC rated gun, you need to hit them a lot more squarely than that to ensure clean kills. I'm just going to have to sit tight and hope that my luck changes. That was another partially obscured one, but I just about managed to thread a shot through. Pellet struck just above the crosshairs, it was about 30 metres, so it would have still been a little bit high. Caught the pigeon right in the base of the neck, and it's dropped it like a stone. Twigs were in the way again for that one. But once again, I just about managed to get the pellet through. That one connected just in front of the fold of the wing, which would have put it straight through the engine room. That pigeon didn't know what hit it. Now that shot actually hit a little bit higher than I'd intended. I was actually going for a heart and lung shot and I wasn't using the scope cam for this one so I can't blame it on that but looking at it the pellet's gone in through there, there's the entrance wound, exit wound's there so it's smashed straight through the spinal column and with the extra whack of the FAC rated 2-2 two -two, 
it still resulted in a very clean kill. Now the pigeon sport hasn't been quite what we'd hoped for today so we're going to wrap up now but we've heard a few crows starting to move so we're going to head across to the crow roost and if that goes to plan that'll be one for another show but I want to just pick up those pigeons first. Not a bad session in the woods there, and now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. VIP tickets to the UK Game Fair have gone on sale. If you want a luxury experience at Stoneley this July, pick up a VIP ticket for fast track entry, an enclosed VIP area, lunch, private catering, shop and drop facility and more. VIP tickets cost £75. Head online to see all the ticketing options to the UK Game Fair, with advanced adult tickets costing just £17.50. The UK Game Fair is the new flagship event for British field sports. Get the dates in your diary now, the 22nd to the 24th of July. Here's the new Galahad Sport Pup from Air Arms, born out of an extensive R&D program comprising no fewer than seven prototype guns. The Galahad boasts a forward-mounted cocking lever that can be reversed for left-handers, and its sumptuous stock incorporates a height-adjustable butt plate that can also pivot left or right. The regulated carbine version tips the scales at 3.6 kilos, measures 698 millimeters, and returns 120 shots per fill in 12 foot pound 2 2 guys. The Airgun Show is planning a full test of the Galahad soon. The Airgun Center now includes custom huggered barrel shrouds and silencers on its day state air rifle combos. So, apart from looking awesome, they'll be extremely quiet. The packages include the Daystate Huntsman Regal and Wolverine C-Type, along with Hawk Scope and Mounts, Deben Super Sling, Deben Tilt Bipod and Airgun Center Deluxe Hardcase, complete with the swanky Huggett Extras. Get the gun packages for £1,080 and £1,350 respectively. Buy a Yukon Photon XT 6.5x50 digital night vision scope from Scott Country and they'll throw in a free tracer lead ray illuminator with £70. Apart from enabling you to see and shoot in the dark, the Photon XT also produces a sharp colour image by day. Fitted with the Tracer IR, it should cover all forms of nighttime hunting from close range ratting to long range rabbiting. And finally, Ruag is giving a free RWS pellet saver to everyone who completes their survey in the March issue of Egan Shooter out now. There's also a chance to win the Egan Center's amazing BSA Ultra SE Elite, plus hunting tactics for rats and crows, the FX Indian Wildcat on test, a first look at the Daystate Griffin, a roundup of the latest night vision gear, and much more. That was the Egan Show News. This week's test gun is the Air Arms S510 Carbine in super light guise. It's certainly an air gun that I'm very fond of because it's based on the same action as my Ultimate Sporter. But this version looks a lot more traditional. It's certainly a very handsome air gun, so let's take a look at some of its features in a bit more detail. The stock is ambidextrous, but you probably wouldn't tell from its handling because gun fit is exceptionally good. I believe it's made from poplar and it's available in several different finishes. I particularly like the capping on the end of the pistol grip on this version which gives it a nice touch of class. The high raised cheek piece ensures that your eye is properly aligned with the scope and the fore end is nice and long. The panels of checkering cut into the fore end and pistol grip look stylish and help to create a secure grip. The only change I might like to see is a deeper cut away from my palm and a thumb scoop because I like to shoot thumb up. Nonetheless, 
The stock design and balance of this air gun make for very good handling. The super light weighs less than 3 kilos and is 95 centimetres long. Although it's an adult sized air gun, it's relatively light and should be comfortably manageable for most shooters. I expect a high standard of finish and engineering from air arms and that's certainly the case here. And this gun isn't a brand new test sample. It's been used as a demonstrator at game fairs and shooting shows. It's still in pretty tidy nick, which I think proves that it can stand up to some heavy handed, unforgiving use. The scope rails straddle the magazine, which is set low enough not to foul your scope unless you're using exceptionally low mounts. Although they don't offer the longest mounting surface, they're well positioned and should accommodate most scopes without any problem. Apart from enhancing the overall looks of the S510, the barrel shroud also helps with sound suppression. Consequently, it's quite a quiet air rifle. However, it's also threaded to accept a silencer if you want to hush the muzzle blast right down for stealthy hunting. Air filling is via the Air Arms Quick Fill system, which features an integral dust filter and a very secure T-bar lockup. From a 190 bar fill, you can expect around 70 shots in 177 calibre and about 90 in 22. There's no regulator, but shot to shot consistency is still very impressive. Keeping an eye on air reserves is simple, as there's a clearly marked gauge sunken into the underside of the stock. It's very discreet, and all you have to do is roll the gun over to read it, which is certainly safer than looking down the barrel on models with a dial at the front of the cylinder. To load up, you draw back the side lever and pull out the 10 shot magazine from the side. It's very easy to reload. You just drop the pellet straight in and there's no spring tension to work against. Once it's full, you push it back in from the side, return the side lever and it's ready to go. That side lever action is fantastic and it's positioned in exactly the right place. It's fast and very easy to use. A quick backwards and forwards cycle cocks the gun, indexes the magazine and probes home the pellet very smoothly. The manual safety catch is located within the trigger blade, which I don't think is the best place for it because I don't like having to fumble around near the trigger when I'm trying to make a gun safe. Nonetheless, there's no denying that it's easy to reach and easy to operate. You push the button in from the left to make the gun safe and then push it back from the right when you're ready to fire. The two-stage trigger is excellent. It's extremely predictable and the blade feels very comfortable in the finger. On this one, there's a distinct stop at the end of the first stage and the second stage let off is very crisp. It's also fully adjustable if you want to tweak it exactly to your liking. Well, I think that's most of the main points covered. So in time-honored tradition, I'm gonna put out a target at 25 meters and we'll see what it shoots like. Well, we're lucky to have a relatively wind-free day today and as a result the 177 calibre test gun has practically landed pellet on pellet for that five shot group at 25 metres. Frankly, I'm not at all surprised. If you take a look at the results from any high level air gun competition, you'll probably see air arms guns taking those podium places. Now, that accuracy is just as important for hunting so you can feel very confident that this air gun is certainly going to cut it out in the field. So, the Air Arms S510 Carbine Superlight is a great handling, very accurate 10 shot PCP that's also nice and light to carry. This version has an SRP of £751, and although that doesn't make it a cheap air gun, it's also not an outrageously expensive one. And when you take into account its features and performance, not to mention the reassurance of the Air Arms brand, this is a serious air gun that offers very good value for money. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. 
Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership.